What's up, people? We here. Fred White, Tales from the Pen. So today I got a little something special, showing you some little clips about what really goes on on Rikers Island. And so you guys can understand where the saying comes from, you won't be smiling on Rikers Island. I'm Lorenzo Steele, and um, I'm a former correction officer from Rikers Island. I worked at Rikers Island from 1987 to 1999. At that time, from the late 80s to the early 90s, Rikers Island C-74 was considered the worst prison in the nation. to average 50 to 60 razor slashings a month. We used to average 50 to 60 stabbings a month at that time. 74 at that time was, was just a vicious chop shop where inhumane things, inhumane acts were taking place at all times of the day. This a young brother right here, actually um, reading in his cell. As you can observe again, the, the size and how small. You see the cell? You see how small the cells are? That's how the cells are like in C-74, exactly. Just like that is the cell, actually. If you look in the back of the cell, right? In, in, that, in that last clip, if you look in the back of the cell, you'll see the radiator, right? And you'll see there's a big piece missing in the radiator. Most likely, you know, we used to take those off and make those into shanks. But in that big space is where we also used to pass stuff because the next cell, his was ripped off too. So we used to pass stuff back and forth right there through that back. If you look in the back of the cell, you'll see it all the way in the back on the left. Go look. And, um, you know, the only, sometimes the only thing you can really do in prison is, is just read. photo of inside a cell. If you if you look a little closer, you can see how small it is, the sink compared to where the bed is and the wall in the corner. This right here is a famous picture right here. Everybody asks, what is the milk doing in the toilet? Well, in the summertime, the toilet, the water in the toilet is the coolest thing in a cell. So the inmates, when they come back from child, and say they want to, you know, keep their, their milk cold or their, um, their cold cuts that they get from commissary cool and so it won't spoil, they will actually place the milk inside the toilet and that's what they call a refrigerator in the summertime. You also remember I told you guys about the toilet bowl in case you thought I was bullshitting. You see that? The toilet bowl. The toilet bowl is also your refrigerator. Again. Do you hear this, kids? Is this what you really want to go through? Is this the rite of passage that you're looking for? Because a lot of these kids think that it's, it, you know, it's honorable to go to prison. There's nothing honorable about it. It just means your dumb ass got caught. Nothing honorable about it. Shh. It's small in stature, but it does deadly harm that will leave permanent marks on the face. happens on a on a regular day basis you know this cat might have been extorted might have um, been on the phone too long didn't want to get off and so you know they, they just cut him out open remember I told you all about those razors like those razors are serious they're small but you know they hit you in the right place you finished and then they leave the scars all over you guys remember I told you all I think I did it on Actually, my first episode I ever did. And then the thing is that people keep them in different places. Sometimes I used to keep them in a matchbook, right? You take the matchbook, close it up, and then wrap some plastic around it. And sometimes you got to keep put that in your ass, You're right? Because sometimes if you want to get it, or you just keep it in your mouth. See what I'm talking about? Boom, done. That's just the way it goes. You know what I mean? That's the, you know, you learn how to put it up in there without getting cut at all. Boom. Bang. You know what I mean? This is what you do.
You with me? This is what I'm trying to say. These are stupid little tricks that you learn in life that you should really never learn, kids. You should really never learn these things. Bomb. Done. That's how you want to live your life? When I first got to Rikers Island in 77, it was every man for himself. When you walked in, it's like everything, your whole attitude changed. You became stale to life. They take all your property and give you a set of what you need. In other words, they give you three socks, three underwear, three t-shirts, and a change of clothes. If you come in like you're scared and somebody give him some direct eye contact, as soon as you walk in the door, he grilling you. And he drop his head like that, then he knows something wrong. You understand? Your ears went numb, your body went numb, your heart started pumping because you never knew what to expect. It all comes down to whether or not you're a Puerto Rican or you're a black man or you're a crip, if you're a blood, all that is irrelevant. Bottom line, you're gonna get tested. When you're in this building, I want you to stay alive to listen carefully to me. Nobody in here is your brother. I don't care if they're as black as you are, as light as daylight, they are not your brother. You mind your business, son, and you'll stay alive. This nigga just got his face smashed in by the CEO, and this nigga probably got his face ripped by another inmate, and I'm just getting here. That shit is a perfect line. It's a perfect scar. And then if they make one slight movement, that shit just disperses and opens up. Sometimes you see the bone. You cut them straight all the way to the bone. And then you see the white meat. And then the shit just pss, 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 pss. And then it's a wrap. That nigga got that scar for the rest of his fucking life. My mission and my goal is to share with the world, especially the youth, that um, society is, is, is almost forcing them into prisons by taking away the jobs, not creating jobs. And um, my mission is to show the insides of prison and what takes place if you continue that defiant and negative behavior. All of your major hoods in your boroughs, Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, and Staten Island, all of those hoods are where these prisoners are being locked up, incarcerated. They filter into all of these prisons that are upstate. that the CUNY tuitions are going up in New York State is because that money that comes down from the state to go to for the schools is now being filtered into the prison system. actually saying that they would rather invest in prisons to house black and Hispanic people than to educate them in, in colleges. Bottom line, man, it's better to be square and be free, man, than to be this gangster and be locked up. Ask any of them gangsters that are locked up, would they rather be out here? Would they rather be in the free world? Ask any of them gangsters that got 50, 60 years that are buried under the jail and places. Ask them would they rather work out here and be in McDonald's and be a square. Ask them. Ask them if they wish they could change their life all around. I guarantee anybody who's done massive time or is in the penitentiary is not going to say yes. I'm glad, I, I'm glad that I made the choices I did. I'm glad I'm in here for the rest of my life. No, not one, not, not, not near one of them's gonna say that. Not near one of them's gonna say that. These people need to start telling the truth about what really goes on in prison, man. What really goes on in jail. You know what I mean? Don't listen to people when they act like, oh, it was popping and I was this and I was that. They're not telling the truth. 
I don't care how busy they get. I don't care how much work they put in. I, I don't care how many people they stab. That shit's irrelevant. Ask them about their mental state. Ask them about their emotional state. Ask them. Ask them how they felt getting in front of the next man and bending over every after every visit and spreading their ass cheeks. Ask them. Ask them to tell you the truth. Shh. Fred White. Tales from the pen.